the men of integrity, men that rescue men and women. And again, we are delighted to have you to join us for a journey through the Word of God. Again, I would certainly love to say thank you so much for the overwhelming response in the community of how you've been blessed by the Word of God. Apostle, I believe you had a testimony about someone coming to the ministry. Yeah, yeah young man showed up at the ministry, said, I saw you all on television. He said, I want to come check you out. So I say, come on and check us out, you know, because we're, this is a genuine thing. We're just about the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> it is so important for you to support television ministry. People's lives are being changed every day in every capacity under every circumstance by television ministry. I'm inviting you to partner with us here at the KPLE television station and sow that seed of faith. Mm -hmm. The address is on the screen. How big, how small, whatever the Lord put in your heart, sow that seed of faith that others may have a life-changing experience just like you and I. Thank you in advance for your seed of faith. God bless you, and I'm really praying for your miracle. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 5, beginning with verse number 4, would be our text tonight. It says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Lunch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have nothing. Nevertheless, thy word I will let down thy net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish, mm -hmm. and their net break. Mm -hmm. Tonight I want to share with the people of God tonight is you can't try God, you must trust God. All right. Or you can't test God, All right. you must try God. And there's a lot of people that are testing God rather than trusting God. Mm -hmm. And when you test God, then you just doing a little bit to see if something is going to happen. But when you trust in God, you putting your whole effort in with great expectation. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm reminded of Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, but without faith it's impossible to please him, but he that cometh to God must believe. And you're right. We must trust the Lord, not, not test the Lord, because we're talking about God. Mm -hmm. We're talking about someone that knows everything. He's the beginning and the end. So you're wasting your time trying to test God. Right? He already knows that he already knew you were going to do that. Yeah. So we got to trust God. And we got to trust what the Bible says about God. Amen. A lot of times people talk about how much faith that they really do have. Mm -hmm. And then when you stop and you look at faith without works is dead. And when you ask the question, what has your faith gotten you lately, okay, then you draw a lot of blanks. Mm -hmm. Because really when you stop and evaluate the situation, there is a lot of testing and not a lot of trusting. Right. And when you look at this particular text, it's really amazing. It's very interesting because the disciples got blessed in spite of of disobedience. Mm. And there's a lot of people that think that they can be blessed and not obey God. Mm -hmm. Because see, any variation of what he has said, okay, is disobedience. All right. Okay. I and like so that. when you try to to obey God in your own capacity, in your own thoughts, then disobedience take place, but we still want to receive what it is that God uh, has promised to give us. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand that because, you know, um, God is obligated to do exact uh, what you say if you exactly do what he said. Yes. But he's not obligated to do what you think. And that's why a lot of people are saying, well, I, I'm doing this and I'm doing this, Bishop, but nothing's happening. Well, you need to examine what you're doing and see if you're doing it exactly. You know, it could be close, but close is like throwing hand grenades and everything like that. No, 
God says when God wants you to be obedient, obedient is to do exactly what he said. Absolutely. I hear a lot of people saying that I'm trying, Bishop, and I'm trying. Uh -huh. And I say to them, if you're trying, mm -hmm. then you are following every principle, precept, and concept that the Word of God has described. Right. But you're trying to do it your way. That's right. You're trying to do it within the parameters of the way you feel, the way you think it ought to be, the easy route. But that's not what God said. Mm -hmm. And so when we examine this text, let's take a look at the text. Mm -hmm. Okay. The text talks about Jesus. He uses the boat. Mm -hmm. He shares the word. He comes back and he tells the disciples, he says, now, launch out into the deep, mm -hmm. okay, and drop your nets mm -hmm. with an S for a draw, mm -hmm. okay? First thing you got to be willing to do is you have to be willing to get out of shadow waters. All right, all right. You got to get out of shadow faith. You got to get into an area that's challenging to you that's going to cause you to have to believe totally on God's Word. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of things that you can get out of shadow water. <laughs> right. Okay? But yeah. you got to launch into the deep. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know, uh, when I was a um, teenager learning to swim, right? You can't, you can't learn to swim in the shadow water. You know, you're just touching yes. that sand. You, you're not doing anything. Yes. But when I learned to swim, I had to go out into the deep. I yes. didn't really know how deep it was, but I know it was over my head. Yes. But they were telling me, say, the deep will kind of hold you up if you just jump out in there. But, you know, when we look at, when we have fear, <laughs> that deep looks deep. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So Jesus tells them to, to launch out into the deep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they said to Jesus, listen, we talked all night. Okay. And we haven't caught nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a lot of people believe that this is an act of faith when the apostles or the, or the disciples says to Jesus, nevertheless, at thy word. Mm -hmm. This was really not an act of faith. <laughs> this was an act of frustration. Mm -hmm. They was acting out of frustration and they said to Jesus, okay, because you Jesus and we don't want to look like we're being disobedient to you. At your word, mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and do what you said. It is proven here in the text because he says to them, drop your nets. Okay. Okay. When they get out here, okay, what they do is they say, okay, we out here. We're going to try what he said. We're not going to trust what he said. We're going to try what yeah. he said. And somebody made a command decision, and they said, you know what? We're not dropping all these nets because we've already <laughs> been out here before. <laughs> we didn't catch nothing. Okay? So we're not dropping all these nets. So let's drop a net. Mm -hmm. How many times have God given you instructions, and because of your frustration and aggravation, mm -hmm. you decide how you're going to do what God said do? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, watch this here. Uh, when, when we're looking at this text, too, um, they forget who they're talking to, first of all. Yes. They're talking to God. Yes. So they inform him of something he already knows. Yes. You see, yes. and that's what we do. Sometimes we say, well, now, Lord, you know you, uh, you know this person here is not like this here. It's not, you know, when God challenges us, he already knows what everything. He knew they yes. turned all night. Yes. And then you're right. Um, somebody made a command decision. That's what we call it in the army. Huh? Uh -huh. But it was not the right it decision. It was the right, right decision. <laughs> was, you, you acted out of disobedience because of frustration mm -hmm. and previous uh, results from what you've already done. Uh -huh. God never said to you to analyze the situation. Mm -hmm. He gives instructions. That's right. And if you follow the instructions, no matter how long you've been doing it, because see, you may have done it the first time, mm -hmm. but you weren't authorized to do it. That's right. Okay. You may have did it the second time, but God never told you to do it. Mm -hmm. Now God is saying, I want you to do exactly what I tell you to do if you want the miracle. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I'm pretty sure Peter was saying, hey, now, Lord, you know, you're a preacher. You, you really need to stick to preaching. I'm a fisherman. Yes. Master yes. fisherman. Yes. So we, we, we know what, you know, that little sneer there. But he forget that uh, this is the fisher of fishers. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that he's talking to. Absolutely. And, 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 and one of the key things that you have to remember, I want to say to you on the audience tonight, is that whatever he says comes to pass. That's right. The conditions and the circumstances really doesn't matter. It's what he has said 
is going to take place. Now, when you're operating in trust and faith, you're in agreement with what he said the final outcome would be. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, cast your nets for nets. a draw. Yeah. He didn't say go out there and see if you're going to catch anything. <laughs> he says cast it for, for, a, for a draw, mm -hmm. meaning that when you cast these nets, yeah. you're going to get something. Yeah. Whatever God tells you to do, you need to have an expectation of what he says is going to happen. Let's look at this thing here. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to understand point number one. You have to be mindful of what God has already done. Uh -huh. This was not the first miracle. This was not the first experience that they have seen Jesus do the miraculous. All right. okay? So when you're going through your frustration and aggravation and trying to decide whether you're going to try God or trust God, mm -hmm. you got to remember all that he has already done. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody is unaware of the capabilities and the abilities of what God can do. Yeah, and he wants us to remember what he's done. Remember now, they, they when they were going over to the other side in the boat, and they and and they were talking about bread and all of this stuff like that, and 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 uh, arguing. And he said, he said, he said, how is it you guys don't have any faith? He said, don't you remember the four thousand mm -hmm. and the five thousand we fed? Mm -hmm. You know, how is it we don't have no faith when we've already experienced a lot of miracles that he's done, and we and we do the same thing today. We we forget about what he's done, and the next challenge. Uh, we act like he hadn't done anything. Yeah, and so we try God. God, mm -hmm. I'm going to try you and see if you're going to do this mm -hmm. rather than trusting him yeah. with the expectation of abundance. Mm -hmm. When you try something, you get crumbs. You ever <laughs> been in, in Sam's and, 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 and H-E-B and they got the little samples out there for mm -hmm. you to, to try? Yeah. They give you a little old bitty piece just for you to see if you're going to like it. Mm -hmm. And then once you try it, then now you're ready to buy the whole product. Yeah. But God says, listen, you've already tasted and seen that I'm good. Come on now. Okay? Come on. You come already on. know my capabilities, my love, my patience, right. my long suffering, my forgiveness. God says, why are you still trying me when you already know? Know what kind of God I am. That's right. And he and he said to Abraham, uh, Sarah laughed. He, he asked Abraham, he said, you know, what's going on here? He said, is there anything too hard for yeah. God? Well, I mean, come on now. I mean, what is it too hard for God? Yeah. And even Jeremiah said, oh, Lord God, nothing is too hard for thee. And then Jesus comes back and said, with men, it's impossible. Yes. But with God, all things are possible. Uh, the fisherman, the mm -hmm. professional said, these are ter <laughs> terrestrial waters. Uh -huh. The fish will see the nets dropping Come into on. the water. Come but on. all Jesus has to do is signal for the fish, and they'll jump in the net. Uh -huh. See, all God has to do is speak concerning your situation. Speak concerning your financial situation, your physical conditions, your ailments, your family, your relationships. All of these things that have you frustrated and aggravated all Jesus has to do is speak a word concerning that. You walk in obedience to what God All said, right. and it's done. Listen, uh, they forgot the story of Jonah. Now, God commanded the fish, so he's in control of all the fishes. He commanded the fish to pick up Jonah and take him where uh, God wanted him to be. So they should have remembered that. Yes, yes. They should have remembered that. Absolutely. The second point then that we look at, okay, he says that you must maintain an expectation of his promise in the future. All right. Okay? Now, if you can remember what he's already done, that should create an expectation there you go. of what he's going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if he fed you in 2015... What makes you think you're going to starve in 2016? That's right. Okay? Right. Yeah. If, if he protected you in 2015, what makes you think any harm is going to come to you in 2016? Right. You have to maintain an expectation of what God is doing. Yeah. Because, you know, the Bible says he changes not. You understand? Whatever he did before, he can do again. God doesn't lose power, and time doesn't change God. Yes. You see? So um, um, God knew and knows about the future Anyway, he's yes. prepared for he's prepared for the future, but are you prepared for the future? Uh, absolutely. I want to challenge you tonight to 
refocus on what God has already done in All your right. life yeah, up like, to this point. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to raise your level of expectation mm -hmm. of what God is going to do in the present and in the future for your life. Mm -hmm. And stop trying and stop <laughs> testing God and put some trust in God. Come on now. I, you're right. I, I, I was sharing on, on, on Sunday and I was telling people, you've been coming to this church every Sunday morning without any real commitment because you've been testing to see if this is really where God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. You've been testing me to see if I'm really a man of God. You've been testing the ministry to see if this is really what you want to get out of the ministry. Mm -hmm. But now you need to start trusting God that That's I'm in right. the right place, under the right man of God, in the right ministry for the miracle that God has spoken over your life. Yes. Because how did you get here? <laughs> and why are you still here? There you go. Yeah. The expectation of what God has promised. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know my thoughts that I have towards mm -hmm. you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring unto you an expected end. Expect the turmoil to stop. Expect the poverty to come to an end. Mm -hmm. Expect the sickness and diseases to be healed. This is the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Come on now. And God says right now the dead is being raised. That's right. That's and right. The you lame know. is walking. Come on okay? now. The blind is seeing and the deaf is hearing. Yeah, and God is so great that his name is greater than the pain. Yeah. His plan is get greater than your mistake. Yeah. You can make a mistake and God will still get you where he wants you to be. So we just, well, you're right. Just trust the Lord. Give ourselves to him. God knows what he's got to do for me. He knows what he's got to do for you. Absolutely. Look, when you look at the third point, it says, don't get weary in your present state. Mm -hmm. Galatians 6 and 9, mm -hmm. don't be weary in well-doing, well yeah. for you shall reap if you faint not. Oh, yeah. So many people are fainting in their mind, fainting in their heart, because it seems like that the situation is greater than your ability. And it may be greater than your ability, mm -hmm. but it can never be greater than your faith. That's right. And then it can never be greater than God's ability through you. Yes. That's why he comes yes. to help us. That's why he gives us a commodity call grace. Yes. Praise and I was thinking about this other scripture too. It says, be ye steadfast. Yes. Unmovable. It doesn't make any difference what it looks like. Yes. Unmovable. Yes. Always abounding in the work of the law for as much as you know. Yes. How much do you really know? Yes. Your labor is not in vain. So we have to trust God and say, well, I don't know what, what the plan of God is, yes. but I know one thing, his plan is good and I'm in his hand. Yes. Always having an expectation to abound. There you go. To there you triumph. Go. There you go. It, it, it leads me to my favorite scripture, which is <laughs> Ephesians 3 and 20. Okay. Now unto him mm -hmm. who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think of him according to the power that worketh in you. Mm -hmm. The faith, the expectation. Faith produces a, a, a expectation in your life. Yeah, and then expectation, watch this here. This is the thing that watch, will keep you. This is the thing that will keep keep you going if you have an expectation that I don't know, but I know that God is going to bring me through. And he gives us a, a, a few scriptures. He says, all things work together for the good of them that love God. It may start out bad. Yes. But we know, and we've got the right hope, we know that it's going to end up good. Absolutely. When you look at the text, the disciples were frustrated. They were probably even <laughs> mad that they had to even yield themselves to go back out on the water. Mm -hmm. So if they're going in from the shore to the deep, that's probably some miles. <laughs> and they really didn't have no motorboats. Mm -hmm. So that means we got to row back out here in the deep. Come on now. We frustrated, we aggravated with no expectation of catching anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so we get out here in the deep. Someone makes a command decision <laughs> and says, we're not dropping all these nets. We're uh -huh. going to drop a net. Uh -huh. And the Bible says in the text, they drop the net. And when they drop the net and they begin to pull it up, the net broke. Uh -huh. Now, some folks will shout right there and say, listen, I got an abundance. You know what? As I dissect this text, 
Nobody should have been laughing and rejoicing and, and all that stuff. They should have been crying. That's right. Because, see, they only got a fraction of what they could have had mm -hmm. had they been obedient. Yeah, and, and the mercy of it is that if there had not been another ship out there, they would have lost all of that that they got. Yes. And absolutely. then and then I like this here. When it's God, well, it's more than enough. Yes. It, it's, it's abundant. Yes. And so, uh, and you got to be paying attention to what God says. He says, drop your nets. Yes. They drop a net. Yes. And they almost missed the whole thing. Out of frustration and aggravation, people disobey God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the blessing wasn't the fact that you just got a net full and now the net is breaking <laughs> because you got more. See, God wants to put more in your life. He wants to give you more. The question is, do you have the capacity to hold it? Mm, do you have right. the capacity to maintain it? That's if right. I give it to you, can you hold on to it? Mm -hmm. Or will you allow frustration, disobedience, aggravation to rob you of what I've given you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I like this, you know, I mean, uh, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it yes. more abundantly. You know, abund when, we got, when we got abundant, we don't mind giving. Yes. yes. When we got abundant, watch this year, we don't mind sharing. Yes. When we got abundant, I think we feel better. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Look at the great opportunity that was afforded them, but because of their aggravation and frustration, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they almost lost that blessing. Almost lost I want to say blessing. to you tonight, don't let present conditions calls you to miss the abundance of what God has for you this year. Don't let a lack of expectation hinder you from receiving what God has and remain mindful of what God's ability is oh. regardless oh, yeah. of the circumstances. Yeah, yeah. You got you're right. Remain mindful of God. God's ability. What's, what's God's ability? I mean, come on. He has all power. Yeah. And we got to keep that in mind when we're dealing with God. We might be dealing with other circumstances, but when it comes to God, we have to step up to another level. Yeah. God says, listen, if you give, he says, I'll give it back to you. Press down, shake See? it together, there you go. and running over. If you give him your time, if you give him your talent, Come on. if you give him your treasure, he says, I will return it unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. Yeah. Listen at this right <laughs> here. If you try him, you will get a little. Mm -hmm. But when you trust him, he that. will give you exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ever imagine. Yeah. Well, the scripture says, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man yes. that trusted mm. in the Lord. Yes. Come on. I yes. mean, you know, if you really want to be blessed, you got to stop testing God and start trusting God. You got to trust God and stop testing God. So watch what happens now. So now... They're about to sink. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's so much fish on the boats, not just their <laughs> boat, but the other people's boat. Uh -huh. That it's about to sink. I'm trying to phantom in my mind that if my net has broken mm -hmm. and I still got enough fish <laughs> to cause my boat to sink, how oh, much man. more abundantly would I have been blessed had I obeyed what God said? Oh, uh, well, what can you say? It, it, it's hard to say where God ends. Huh? <laughs> you, we don't know where he begins, but we definitely don't know where he ends. Yes. And, and uh, who, who knows how many fishes was on their way That's to right. that, right? That, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that you're going under this year. But you're not going under because of poverty and lack. Uh -huh. You're not going under because of sickness and disease. You're going under because of the abundance that God is going to put into your life. Mm -hmm. If you begin to walk in total obedience to the will of God, All right. the blessings of God will come upon you and overtake you, and you will go under, under the anointing, under the blessings, Come under on. the grace, under the mercy, under the blood of Jesus Christ. And my God, there is no limit to what God can do. That's right. There's no limit. Watch this here. And then we'll start experiencing that last uh, part of the uh, reading of Psalm 23. And goodness and mercy shall follow me yes. all the days of my life. He's talking about here. Yes. And then I'll do well in the house of the Lord. But we need some blessings here. But we're only going to get it if we trust the Lord. Yes. You have 
have to stop testing God. Mm -hmm. This is serious. You're in a whole nother year, a whole nother dimension, a whole nother time. And God is saying to you in the beginning of this year, stop trying me. Mm -hmm. Stop testing me and trust me. Am I not God? Is not that anything too hard for me to do? Mm -hmm. I've shown you in the past I can resolve any situation. I've shown you in the past that my ear is not dumb, that I cannot hear, mm -hmm. and neither is my hand short that I cannot say. Mm -hmm. He that call it upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. eh? He's yeah. ready. Yeah, and Paul told us, he said that the Lord wants to show us Things that we we can't even fathom. Yes. Things that uh, we we couldn't hardly we couldn't believe. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost has come to show us the things that God has for us. But again, the channel of faith, the channel of trust, yeah. is going to put us into line with God. I want to say to you tonight something that God has put into my spirit to say to you, and that is this: If you don't have enough, then that's a seed for more than enough. <laughs> and right. you should plant that seed yeah. into good ground that you would have more than enough. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to eat and be filled. It's not enough to take care of this current situation. Mm -hmm. You need to find a place to sow that seed. If you don't have enough, sow that seed that God will give you more than enough. Say something to the people tonight here. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, um, the Bible says, trust in the law with all thy heart, soul, mind, and body. But it says, lean not to thy own understanding. And that's where we get into the testing of the law. We start thinking. Yeah. And, 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 and that's the wrong thing to do with yes. God. But we got to start trusting and acting. Yeah. The Bible teaches us so very much. John tells us in 1 John, this is the confidence we have in him, mm -hmm. that when we pray, he hears us. That's and right. we have a petition before him. God is listening to you, okay? But God is also talking to you. Mm -hmm. And God says, I've heard you, now hear me. <laughs> Walk in obedience to the things that I have said to you. No matter how hard it may seem, no matter how difficult you may think it is, if you obey me, if you would trust me and stop testing me and trying me, I will open the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. I want you to join me this year at the Rivers of Living Waters ministry every Sunday at 1030 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Apostle Fisher would like you to join him at Saint Center. At yeah, Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. and then even a Friday at 730 p.m. Okay. Come and be a part of the life-changing experience. This is your year to be blessed. This is your year to have a miracle. Don't forget, write that check tonight mm. to keep ministries like this flowing yes. and people being blessed, delivered, and set free. The address is on the screen. Mm -hmm. And if you're really enjoying it, then show us how much you're being blessed by being partners with us. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for your miracle. Out of your bed, out of your, out of your, out of your, out of your.